Tonight on Queen City News at 10, the primaries of the 2024 election are winding down and the Super Tuesday results are in. Good evening, I'm Brian Blakely. Hey, good evening, I'm Alicia Barnes of Queen City News. It's your local election headquarters and our team is tracking the results in the Tar Heel State. We have crews all across North Carolina following some of the biggest races on the ballot today. And they'll be joining us live from Raleigh, Greensboro and Mecklenburg County. The biggest race tonight is the race for the White House. Donald Trump and President Biden are moving closer to a historic rematch. Biden was declared the winner in North Carolina after running unopposed. Well, Trump is the winner of the Republican presidential primary in North Carolina, beating former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley and the Republican frontrunner for the nomination will pick up most of the Tar Heel State's 74 delegates. Now you're looking live at the Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida, right now where Trump is expected to address his victories tonight. And right now, Trump is set to speak in about 15 minutes. But one person we <coughs> haven't heard much from today is Haley. Queen City News reporter Shakira Speaks live in Charleston. And Shakira, you've been trying to get in touch with her all day. Have you heard anything after tonight's loss? Yeah, Brian, the Nikki Haley campaign told us that they would not have any planned public events, but even as Super Tuesday is coming to an end, we still have not heard anything from Haley. She has not made herself available to the media at all today. A very uncharacteristic move for a presidential candidate. Now, her last campaign email rolled in around 7 o'clock. Um, encouraging supporters and potential voters to, quote, help her save America. Her last campaign text came in around 616, and we haven't heard anything from the Haley campaign at, at, since then. Now, I did send an email to the Haley press team on if we're going to get a statement from uh, the, the presidential candidate Haley, but we have not received a response back. Hopefully, we receive something in the next few minutes. For now, reporting in Charleston, Shakira Speaks Queen, City News. Thank you, Shakira. North Carolina's race for governor is set to become one of the most closely watched governor's races come November. Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson is now the GOP winner for the state's gubernatorial race, and he's set to be able to face off against North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein. He defeated several other Democratic candidates for the nomination, including former state Supreme Court Justice Michael Morgan. Queen City News anchor Robin Kennedy live at Stein's watch party tonight in Raleigh. So, Robin, I can hear the energy, but you tell me, what are you seeing the energies like in the room tonight? Yeah, Alicia, Josh Stein started out very positive, and he says that we are, quote, at a crossroads. He was making a clear distinction between he and his opponent, Republican Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. Now they are both in the race for governor of North Carolina for November. And in addition to talking about how they are at a crossroads, he hammered home the differences between he and Robinson. Tonight at 10 30, we'll talk about Stein's plans to reach unaffiliated voters, which will be very key in him beating Robinson in November. And we'll also talk about Stein's plans to grow the economy. I'm live in Raleigh. Robin Kennedy, Queen City News. All right, Robin, well, about 70 miles west, <coughs> Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson also celebrated tonight's big win in Greensboro. Queen City News reporter Daniel Pierce live there. Daniel Robinson used his speech to rally those who didn't vote for him. Yeah, he's really using the momentum that he has tonight to take him to November to become the next and the first black governor of the state of North Carolina. He spoke for about 10 minutes in his acceptance speech, using some of the time uh, to address the ongoing criticism that he has faced for his controversial and at times conspiracy based comments. The rest of the time he spent it laying out his policies, which are incredibly similar uh, to the backbone of the Republican Party. And that's what he's trying to use to gain that support. People that didn't vote for him. Education being the first thing that he talked about and, quote, removing agendas from the classroom, increasing pay wages for educators and making sure students have a firm foundation when they graduate and enter the workforce. He also spent a lot of time talking about the economy here in North Carolina tonight. Uh, in about 25 minutes, we're going to hear from him play a portion of that about why he says that he is different and able to relate to voters better than his challenger. Live in Greensboro, Daniel Pierce, Queen City News. Locally, the race is on the Democratic primary for North Carolina House District 105, challenging State Representative Trisha Cotham. Now, you may remember her controversial decision last year to switch parties, becoming a Republican. 
And here are the results tonight for the Democrats trying to take over that seat. Nicole Sidman winning that race tonight. The Queen City News anchor Morgan Francis live at the Mecklenburg County Democratic Headquarters in Uptown. Morgan. Yeah, Brian, a uh, lot of excitement. It is a cozy room behind me, but you can hear some of her reporters cheering in the background. She just got up and spoke not too long ago, but something that st uh, stuck out to me is someone said that they are determined here in Mecklenburg County to have no more Trisha Cotham Democrats. So this race, very much about what happened with Trisha Cotham in District 112. She outraged voters when she switched parties from Democrat to Republican, and that gave Republicans a supermajority and resulted in some tighter abortion restrictions here in the state. Nicole Sidman served as a campaign manager for Christy Clark when um, Clark won House District 98 in 2018. You can see some people are starting to um, file out now as uh, she they just announced that uh, she has won this primary. She is determined to uh, win her first race here as she faces Trisha Cotham. Um, in this upcoming general election. So a lot of excitement behind me, much more to talk about. We're going to check in with the candidate here in a little bit, and we will report back to you at 10.30. All Reporting right. live in Uptown, I'm Morgan Francis, Queen City News. Thank you, Morgan. And Morgan mentioned Christy Clark. She is the mayor of Huntersville. Uh, just to be able to point her out, after a busy day at the polls, Mecklenburg County elections officials are now working hard into the night to tally all the results. Queen City News reporter Maureen Wartz <laughs> live tonight at the County Board of Elections Office in Charlotte. So Maureen, when you spoke with elections officials, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. How are things looking there? Alicia, just maybe a minute or two ago, the last ballots were delivered here at the Board of Elections. So a lot of people are really excited here. It has been a steady stream of cars as people have been dropping up those ballots since about 8 p.m. tonight. And officials did say it was kind of a slow start to Super Tuesday, but things did pick up in the afternoon and they are optimistic. Now their goal is for around 25 to 30 percent of registered voters to show up for these presidential primaries. And right now we know 7 percent of voters voted early, but we are keeping an eye on those numbers and we'll give you an update at 10.30. Brian, Alicia? All right, Maureen, yeah, a lot of votes still kind of being counted over there at the Board of Elections. Let's go ahead and bring in Chief Legal Analyst Kali Froge. And not a lot of surprises here tonight, except for Mecklenburg County Board of Commissioners, where Pat Cotham, the incumbent longtime Democrat there, lost, and a lot of people think it was the Trisha Cotham effect. Not many surprises tonight, but I can tell you that name recognition matters in elections, right? And so your name pops up. People can go to the polls and expect to see you every time. Hey, I can vote for that name. I can vote for that name. Name recognition tonight hurt Pat Cotham 100% because her daughter's actions were something where Democrats didn't have a chance to go against her because she's a Republican now. So they say the only way we can go against you is to vote against you. And so it shows. I mean, I thought that there would be a decrease in the number of folks that voted against her, but I did not anticipate, you know, almost nine to 10,000 folks going the other way. And so by all means, she had a noticeable gap in, in loss of voter support. I mean, in previous years, she's been the top vote getter. She's been the number two a number of times. So this was a major blow and you can directly connect it to her daughter's actions. Obviously last year that opened the floodgates of a number of legislation that got passed in the state. And we just showed you the election results there from that race. So we're talking about 26%, 25%, 24% in that order. It was Lee Altman, Arthur Griffin, and then new to this board, Yvette Townsend Ingram, Talk to me about when you saw this race, why did she uh, do so well tonight? Perfect storm. I mean, you have the issue with Pat Cotham, and then you have a person that's a seasoned individual. Yvette Townsend Ingram has been in politics for a number of years in the background, helped a number of candidates to get office and become uh, elected officials. And so she's run before in the past. She's went through the process. She know what it, what it took to raise funds. She know what it took to be in positions of shaking hands with individuals at, 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 at campaign events and giving speeches. And she's someone that's connected to the community. She wants to serve and she has committed herself to doing it out there. I hosted a forum with her earlier this year and she talked about why she wants to continue to serve and why she puts herself out there for service. She said, because I still feel like I have something to offer mm -hmm. and I feel like my time to serve is now. And, and obviously the voters across this county uh, have agreed with her comments. Yeah, changing of the guard tonight in some way. And Pat Cotham, Morgan was uh, saying that a lot of people had a lot of name confusion there. I mean, if you go to the polls, I mean, Pat Cotham has been in office since 2012, so you're talking about 12 plus years of voting for the same name. And so you come in there expecting to go against Cotham. It's easy to find that. And if you are not a registered Republican, the only Cotham that you see on the ballot, 
I know I'm not voting for that one. I think that's what happened. Like the message sent yeah. for November too. Yeah. Big loud message. All right, Colleen, we'll see you in about 10 minutes. He's not going anywhere more to be able to cover tonight on the lo local election results. And Queen City News is your local election headquarters. We'll continue to track the results of tonight's primary elections on air and online. We'll have a full breakdown of tonight's results on our website, qcnews.com. And scan this QR code that is on your screen right now. It'll take you directly to the story. You're watching Queen City News, the most local news in Charlotte.